Hey, what's going on Machine Masters? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining us on this channel today. Today I will be working within FL Studio 20. Today's tutorial is going to be about creating beats from melodies. And that's one of the biggest questions that I get since we have so many new tools and VSTs and MIDI effects that allow you to create chords and chord progressions. The big question remaining is, well, what do we do to create melodies from chords or the opposite? How do you create chords from melodies? And at this moment, I don't know if there's a straight answer for that yet, let alone a tool that'll do it 100% that always sounds good, but there's always math. <laughs> there's always ways for you to hack it in FL Studio having a prolific piano roll and things like that make that very easy to kind of figure out for yourself. So for this first part, I'm gonna start with a melody. I'm gonna use something called Riffer to kind of help me generate a random melody. And I'm probably gonna use a VST I don't give too much shine to, and that's gonna be Serum. I like all kinds of different VSTs, but I think we're kind of giving Omnisphere too much run for it money. And since I'm starting with a melody per se, I'm going to use a very simple sound. Let's see what we generate here. I'm going to route this like any other plugin like Scalar and stuff. Output to channel one and then on Serum I'm going to do input from channel one. And this way Riffer will communicate to Serum. And Riffer, this is a cool plugin to generate melodies almost exclusively. So I hit the dice and then hit play. So I'm at 130 and we'll speed my tempo up to probably at 140. Now this is running like an ARP, it's going too fast at the simple, let's switch it to eighths. And in FL, it's not playing enough of it. So like when you build chords around stuff, the biggest trick is, especially if people use loop packs and sample packs, like you made from the Machine Master Store or what have you, you might get a one or two bar melody bass line or something. And you want to build around that. Well, depending on the music theory you use, really short melodies can work with multiple chords. I believe Lil Wayne's Lollipop was like that, where it has this synth line, and then when the hook comes in, there's four different chords. Um, a lot of Little John, the Nord lead type synths, but then on certain parts of certain songs, you have like guitar chords and things going. It's all following a certain kind of math. So I always try to figure that out when I work. I'm gonna see if I can find something that's out of the ordinary. Let's do Dorian, let's try G Dorian. So this melody repeated right here, that didn't sound good. So I'm gonna take this note, bring it down. This might be going too low down for my taste. Let's bring it up. And then this is doing it too. I'm gonna bring that down. I'm trying to keep my, uh, my pattern symmetrical. So it's like steps or pyramids. So everything's going down. Like if you look at it, like if we drew a line through the melody and this particular plugin just keeps you on scale. You can just draw random melodies in FL Studio, which a lot of people do. Uh, I just find the best tools that kind of help you along the way, especially if you're starting with melody first. That's cool enough for me to work. I want to click on export MIDI, bring that on top of Serum. Now in Serum, I don't need it triggered by that anymore. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate Serum. And what I want to do for this one is create like a chord progression around it, which is the main part of this lesson here. And this bell, I might want to change that too. I'll start with pads and darken them by doing half time or pitching them down or something, depending on how it feels. But I always use pads to kind of find the chords. So what we need to do now is set our piano roll to the key of that. First thing you want to do is check that and make sure it's true. So we go up here, we go to helpers, scale highlighting, I'm going to choose G, and then I'm going to make sure it's on Dorian, go up to where my note data is and make sure all the individual notes are in the gray or highlighted areas, hence scale highlight, and that none of them are overlapping with the black keys or the keys that are not in our scale. I can remove this time signature marker as well that most VSTs generate automatically. And now I can work on my chords. So what I look at is what's the lowest point, which is here. So that's kind of like a root note kind of thing. I might root note it over here. And then up here, I might trace this and make it a chord. So that works perfectly. So in my scale, it starts on the two. This bottom note here, overlapping each note, is a two chord. So if you know like your chord progressions and things like that, or you have websites and tools like Scalar that give you suggestions, you'll just look for those commonalities. Like where does two go to next? So it's like two to five, two to four, two to one. There's different relationships in the circle of fifths that work best, but it gets a little strange because Dorian flattens one of the keys and it doesn't follow the traditional one. So what that tells me and what that means to me is I can do whatever the heck I wanna do. And that's what I wanna do. I'll try to see what I can get to overlap this. That works.
and maybe get a third chord somewhere down the line. Um, and I might start from a different pattern. I'm trying to see if there's any more overlap. Because remember, in scale highlight, every other key that's highlighted is a chord. So I can kind of move this around and see what kind of shapes I got. So is every other key here, and it's up there. Let's try that. So this particular patch is cutting it off and it sounds crazy. I'm gonna turn it down. Now I'm gonna clone it and I'm gonna do the same thing except for I'm gonna use a more realistic sound, like a KY sound, a keyboard sound. There's quite a few. Let's start with the same chords. Let's move them an octave up so we can hear them. So I don't need that twice. It also kind of sounds dis dissonant doing that. So I'm playing once. I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna copy them up one octave. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm emulating someone playing a chord in each hand. So there's a the same chord in left hand and right hand. And when you do that, most of the time you skip the, the third or the middle note in that first chord. And this way you get a more complex chord. And then also when we do something like strum, it gets more flavor at it. And then one last one will We'll dub it again. So this was keys, and I'm just keeping it simple. I, I feel my sound design head turning, but I'll give out that'd be like an hour tutorial on how I make the perfect keys. I don't feel like doing that right now. Forgive me, but I will do a bass line or bass sound. All right, so with the bass sound, we'll just trace the root notes of the chords because that's the easiest thing to do. And then drop them down into bass region. There we go, getting some life. Now we take that melody, we're gonna put it on its own pattern. And then I'm gonna do a, a small arrangement where most beats you hear the melody start the song off and then it gets to the section which I'll call an initial chorus or the first time you hear the chorus where it's shorter than the rest of the song. That's where all the sounds come in and smack you in the face. So that's what I'm gonna do real quick. Just put some drums under that and then go from there. All right, so this is what it'll sound like with just the melody into this kind of drop thing and then just the melody with the drums. So yeah, from there, then you could expand it. You could change your chords up, do different shapes of chords or more complex chords, change your patches, your sounds, go from like this drone sound I did for my drop and switch it to an 808 to make it busier with just the melody and drums. And that'd be your verse, that'd be your hook kind of deal. And then you just have the melody play by itself to introduce the two parts or transition both parts. It's really simple with this style of music, but the main thing I just wanted to drive home was the fact that you could start with a melody and then trace your chords and figure out the rest just by using anything that supports ghost channels where you can see the MIDI behind each other. And even better, if you have something that locks the scale for you, so this way you can just draw things in. And the beautiful thing is, if this chord starts to irritate you like it's irritating me too much, you just go back to the, go back and move it around and make sure you get the right shape and then adjust accordingly. Real simple, not a lot of math involved, a lot of tracing. If you drew Goku in middle school and high school like I did, you already know what this is about. But anyway, I'm MG The Future. Thank you guys for checking us out today on the Machine Masters. If you guys got comments, questions, or concerns, or if you have a different way to kind of figure out this workflow, definitely let us know in the comment box below. If you're on social, be sure to follow us. I'm at MG The Future on Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to follow at Machine Masters as well. Until next time, guys, peace.